Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel and my fellow XRP holders, I gotta tell you, you are not gonna mind this one bit. A CFTC commissioner is snapping back after comments from SEC Chair Gary Gensler just the other day uh, who has indicated that uh, he wants to continue reaching and reaching and reaching for more power uh, to, uh, to regulate the, the, the cryptocurrency asset class on the whole, and this particular commissioner named Brian Quintens is not having it, as you shall see. And it's fascinating, it's not only him that jumped in, also uh, former CFTC chairman uh, Chris Giancarlo has chimed in, kind of echoing what Brian Quintens has stated here. So I want to share with you that, um, as, as well as some thoughts from uh, Chris Giancarlo that he had shared before the SEC officially uh, filed a legal complaint against Ripple uh, because the CFTC has made it very clear that uh, he does not believe that XRP specifically um, is, is a security. And it, it just, he's provided lots of thoughtful things on that topic. But uh, before I go any further, I do want to be clear. I don't have a legal or financial background of any kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos as a hobby. But that's all that's going on here, damn it. Oh, by the way, I got comments also from a couple uh, attorneys within the XRP community. Uh, Jeremy Hogan and also John Deaton. And so... Uh, this is what, what I've got on here right now. I don't need to read through this, but uh, this is the official page for Commissioner Brian Quintens on the uh, the government website for the CFTC, Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And so just yesterday, here's what Brian tweeted out. And it's just it's fascinating seeing this sitting coming from a a sitting commissioner on the with the CFTC. Uh, just so we're all clear here. The SEC has no authority over pure commodities or their trading venues, whether those commodities are wheat, gold, oil, or crypto assets. Well, how about that? So here you have one of the commissioners at the CFTC saying, no, the SEC absolutely does not have anything to say regarding XRP itself. Now, uh, that doesn't mean that... that uh, the SEC can't go after any entity that is selling something that's packaged as an investment contract, but that could be something that would otherwise just be a commodity. Just like if you look at what happened with Howie and, you know, the oranges and the orange groves. Well, it wasn't ever the case that the orange itself in that case was a, was a security. It's just that it was packaged in such a way. But the assets themselves, Brian Quintance is speaking truth. He is speaking reality. There is no way that XRP, by the nature of it existing could possibly be an be a security because because think about that like what if what if what if xrp had been created and then it was never used and ripple was never created is it still a security no right because i don't even think the sec would argue that so isn't that proof then that it's about the way that it's packaged and sold or would the would the sec argue that if xrp exactly uh and as it was formed and you know back when it was technically created in uh or June of 2012, that's when the XRP was actually created before Ripple existed. But if back then, like if you if, 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 were there no developments and no global adoption, but it still existed all these years later, would to, would the SEC today in 2021 say, yeah, that's a security by the nature of it existing? I think the answer is no, and I think that's pretty damn clear. Pretty damn clear. So uh, that's that's why another reason it's so disgusting. What the SEC has done in this case of SEC versus Ripple, because it's not just Ripple, they're also attacking XRP and XRP holders. They're not protecting investors. And so uh, my fellow XRP YouTuber, the blockchain backer, retweeted that. And his 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 tweet here was so funny, I just had to share it with you. Here, here's what he wrote while he retweeted that from Commissioner Brian Quintins. CFTC commissioner just comes walking in and throws all the SEC's papers off their desks and yells, this is my house. And so I got a laugh out of that. I thought, okay, I've got to throw that in my video. That's pretty funny. That was well done, the blockchain backer. I like that. Um, and then uh, attorney Jeremy Hogan responded to that tweet from Brian Quintens and wrote the following. Uh, Mr. Quint Quintens, I understand the commission sometimes submits amicus curiae briefs to courts to assist in interpretation of the law. Has the CFTC made a decision as to whether to file an amicus in the SEC versus Ripple litigation? And then somebody asked him 
Uh, what's amicus curiae in English? Sorry, my Latin is a little rusty. And Jeremy Hogan wrote the following. An amicus brief is submitted by an entity not in the litigation, so a third party, which has an interest in a case. The CFTC has an interest in the Ripple lawsuit if it believes that XRP is a commodity and it could file a brief stating why XRP is a commodity and not a security. And so th this is the thing, it's like, we've talked about this concept of how effectively the CFTC and SEC are kind of in a power struggle, but I haven't seen any big moves but from the CFTC, not really, coming in and saying, no, this is actually our turf. It's like they're being... Uh, they're just being submissive to the SEC. That's that's what the optics are for somebody like me, just a lay person like me. Like that's what it looks like here. And then you have Gary Gensler aggressively coming in talking about how they want to expand their regulatory overreach. That that's exactly it. And so it seems to me like Brian Quintins gets that, but I'm not seeing actions from the CFTC. So if this is an opinion that's broadly held in the CFTC, uh, would it then make sense, as Jeremy Hogan cited here, to to to, to file this amicus brief? Because you can be like, hey, uh, we're the CFTC, this kind of matters to us too. And then, because look, that'll just be that much more pressure on the SEC. So why aren't they doing it? Why are they being submissive? Because it could not be more clear that XRP, by the nature of existing, is not a security. Um, and then there was this from attorney John Deaton, who of course is the attorney that is uh, seeking to intervene in the SEC versus Ripple case on behalf of over 19,000 XRP holders. And he wrote the following. Hey, Gary Gensler. And he tagged Gary Gensler on Twitter, by the way. Hey, Gary. If there is such clarity in the markets regarding digital assets, why does your former agency feel compelled to speak out? Now, that's an excellent question. And for those of you not in the know, uh, Gary Gensler, who today is the new uh, chairman of the SEC, he's running the show over at the SEC. He was previously uh, the chairman of the CFTC. That's interesting, isn't it? So he was there from uh, May 26, 2009 to January 3rd, 2014. So almost five entire years he was there. And um, and now his former agency is saying no. <laughs> no to what the SEC is doing right now. And again, the timing of this is not coincidental. These comments, which are strongly worded, and I mean, there, there, this is no words here, uh, come directly after... Gary Gensler has, has publicly stated the degree to which he is seeking regulatory overreach on behalf of the SEC. It, it, this is very clear to me. Uh, and then you have this, Chris Giancarlo. And this is a, a former CFTC chairman. He was chairman after Gary Gensler was chairman at the CFTC. And he tweeted out the following just yesterday. Only one U.S. regulatory agency has experience regulating markets for Bitcoin and crypto, and it is not the SEC. It is the CFTC. If Biden administration is serious about sensible crypto regulation, it needs to nominate a CFTC chairman. And so uh, John Deaton uh, saw that, and he tweeted out the following. For those of you who do not know, Chris Giancarlo is the former chairman of the CFTC and heads the Digital Dollar Project. In short, he knows what the hell he's talking about. By the way, he has declared XRP is not a security and should not be treated any differently than Ether. And so, uh, and this is his page on the CFTC. And, uh, and so here is an article from Forbes, June 17th, 2020. Uh, it's titled, XRP isn't a security, declares former CFTC chairman. And so I printed this up and I highlighted some, some parts I wanted to share. And this, this article, um, it actually is at points rather critical of the position of, uh, of, of Giancarlo, uh, mostly as it has to do, pertains to um, Ripple and their holdings of XRP. He has some grievances there. And um, look, this this video is not designed as like a, a takedown. Like as much as I really genuinely enjoy going through opinions that people have written up and then tearing in them shreds if I think they don't make sense because that that's fun. Because uh, I just like the, the you know the analytical thinking. It's not to be mean to the people, it's just because I, I love to you know diversity of thought in that. As much as I love doing that, I'm going to try and resist doing that uh, for this video because that's not the purpose of a video like this one. But um, there were some important points in here to the positive that I do want to highlight. Um, and so I printed this up, and the first one is as follows. By the way, uh, this paper that was written by Christian Carlo 
It's actually a co-author. Uh, the other individual, uh, I don't know, the name's in here somewhere. I think the last name's Balk. Uh, it's, it's in part of what I highlighted here. But anyway, I just wanted to cite that before digging in. So anyway, the bombshell paper titled Cryptocurrencies and U.S. Securities Laws Beyond Bitcoin and Ether, uh, co-authored by commodities lawyer, there you go, that is, uh, Conrad Balk, there you go, uh, of New York law firm Wilkie, Farr, and Gallagher, LLP, methodically reviews the criteria of the Howey test established by the SEC in 1946 to determine whether something is a security and point by point argues that XRP does not qualify. Rather, the paper argues, like its name would indicate, cryptocurrency is a currency of perhaps more interest to the Federal Reserve and central banks than securities regulators. Uh, yes, so that's that's absolutely true. And again, that is nothing to do with the fact that anything that is actually a commodity can be packaged and sold as an investment contract, as a security. Of course we recognize that's the case, but the SEC is pretending like that's not reality. And finally, that's why it's like a breath of fresh air to see an acting commissioner of the CFTC say, no, that's not how this works effectively. That was refreshing. Uh, and then it also states in this piece, uh, Giancarlo is right. Uh, Ripple could end up being one of the most valuable startups in fintech. Uh, yes, that is potentially true, right? Like, it could be true. And I, I'm left wondering, though, uh, what's that mean for XRP? Because I still believe that XRP, look, Ripple could be worth a fortune if it, if it ends up going public one day. I got that. It could be one of the most valuable companies on the planet, potentially. Uh, but um, I still think by the nature of open markets and XRP and the way that it's traded, uh, it's the nature of it being truly global. I just, and, and with how illiquid it is now, I still think, despite that being an, an investment opportunity, perhaps, uh, XRP, in my opinion, it just I'm just more interested in holding uh, that cryptocurrency because it's supported not just by Ripple, but by a, a community of developers. It, it's very clear that people the world over have, have found true utility with it and think that it's going to be worth more in the future. And yeah, so a lot of them are just speculators, but people speculate on everything. That should be allowed. That should not be a problem. But still, the SEC pre presents that fact as if it's some sort of problem or some sort of indication that Ripple actually is some sort of common enterprise, and that just isn't true. That's not true in the least. And then uh, here they also wrote in this article, uh, ultimately, under a fair application of the Howey test and the SEC's presently expanding analysis, XRP should not be regulated as a security, but instead considered a currency or a medium, uh, medium of exchange, Giancarlo and Balk argue in the paper. The increased adoption of XRP as a medium of exchange and a form of payment in recent years, both by consumers and in the business-to-business -business setting, further underscores the utility of XRP as a bona fide fiat substitute. That speaks for itself, doesn't it? I, I, this could not be more clear. And then it's, it's just, the SEC is sitting here, and you know they don't believe what they're saying, but they're, 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 in, they're arguing, they're actually arguing in their legal complaint that there is not utility with XRP, and it's one of the only cryptocurrency that's used in the commercial production of any, anything. You know, it's an enterprise-grade software today, and also today moving money around the, the, the planet. <laughs> no utility. Okay, all right. Uh, the Howey test Giancarlo uses to bolster his arguments is a three-pronged definition used by the SEC. Uh, none of what she says apply to XRP. And by the way, that's good. Like if, if it applies, that means that uh, you you pass the Howey test. And if you pass the Howey test, that actually means you're a security. You're, you know, it's an investment contract. So here we're saying that there's a th there's a the test here, and uh, by the definition used by the SEC, uh, none of it applies to the XRP. And so. Uh, then the piece continues. The first prong is that an investment contract should be implied or explicitly stated between the issuer of the asset, in this case XRP and the owner, in which money, uh, in which money exchanges hands. And here's a quote: "The mere fact that an individual holds XRP does not create any relationship, rights, or privileges with respect to Ripple any more than owning Ether would create a contract with the Ethereum Foundation." Uh, the organization that oversees the Ethereum architecture, end quote. Truer words have never been spoken yet. Of course, the Ethereum Foundation and Ethereum gets the pass, and uh, Ripple and XRP has not. Peace continues. The second prong of the Howey test stipulates that there can be no common enterprise between shareholders or a shareholder and the company. 
While refuting both relationships, Giancarlo curiously goes on to write that, given the juxtaposition between XRP's intended use as a liquidity tool, its more general use to transfer value and its potential as a speculative asset, XRP holders who utilize the coin for different purposes have divergent interests uh, with respect to XRP. Now, in this piece, which I cited, um, is at times critical, and I'd say in a way that doesn't make logical sense, but this isn't a takedown video, so I'm not going to get into it. Uh, that's the reason that I wrote, curiously. So this individual is somehow curious about that last part, that, that last quote that I just read, but it is just a matter of fact that um, XRP holders hold XRP for different reasons, and not all of them um, hold it because they think that Ripple is going to make it worth more. That's just not the case. And for me, I, and I'm one of those people, I, I'm not counting solely on Ripple. I'm, I'm counting on a healthy ecosystem of developers and other participants of which Ripple happens to be a notable participant. But it's certainly not the case that, because look, if Ripple goes away, XRP is still, still valuable. People are still using it to move money around the planet. And like, like how could there be a common enterprise when if it goes away, I'm still bullish on it. If, if Ripple goes away, I'm sitting here like, okay, XRP is still really useful. Like, how could it be a common enterprise? Like, it just doesn't make a damn bit of sense here. You couldn't say that about Apple stock, though. Apple goes away. What are you doing with your Apple stock? You know? It, it just... Logic, my friends, it's not that hard. I know you guys know that. Anyway, peace continues. The third prong of the Howey test stipulates that no reasonable expectation of profit should be derived from the efforts of Ripple, according to the paper. Uh, supporting this position, Giancarlo writes... Though Ripple maintains a sizable stake of the XRP supply and certainly has a pecuniary interest in the value of its holdings, it is not enough to suggest that a mutual interest in the value of an asset gives rise to an expectation of profits as contemplated by Howie. Exactly, which goes back to kind of what I was saying. There's a little bit of overlap here, simply that holders of XRP are here for so many different reasons. And the fact that Ripple happens to have an interest in the and a healthy XRP ecosystem, that in and of itself does not mean that XRP is somehow magically a security. Logic don't follow, my friends. And then the last piece I wanted to uh, highlight here is that uh, they wrote, in February 2018, the notoriously compliant exchange Coinbase added support for XRP, something it would unlikely do if it were concerned it might accidentally be selling an unlicensed security. Isn't that telling? So why would ultra-compliant Coinbase, and I do believe that's fair to state about them, it, why would ultra-compliant Coinbase be willing to risk selling a, a security? Might it be that there's confusion in the marketplace and they didn't know that the SEC was going to come after Ripple claiming that XRP is an unregistered security? <gasps> do you think? Yeah, there isn't sufficient regulatory clarity. And I'll tell you what, that really burns my biscuits, folks. It burns my biscuits. I'll go ahead and wrap up there, though. I am not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau.